We have with us today the freshest and sweetest news from the Korean bio industry. My name is Juri Huang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest biotech issues today for you. So don't forget to subscribe, like and set your alarm for Bio TV. We are currently in between seasons as winter ends and spring passes through to summer. I guess many of you are suffering from the big difference in daily temperatures these days. It feels like warm springtime, March doesn't apply to today anymore. However, the last cold snap is over. The warmth of spring is finally coming to us. Meanwhile, though the number of daily infection cases is still hovering around 600, but let's look forward to the day we can finally take off our masks, just like we take off our thick winter clothes. Okay, then let's get started. We have prepared the top three news items for the last two weeks. First up, the Ministry of Health and Welfare announced that it will inject 771.8 billion Korean won this year into biopharmaceutical industry. This is intended to boost the development of COVID-19 vaccines. Then we'll talk about how Celtrion has acquired emergency use authorization from the U.S. FDA for its COVID-19 rapid test kit. Finally, we'll look into how the Korean research team has developed a live B-cell distinction mechanism, opening up the possibility for application to the treatment of various diseases. Compared to the budget for last year, which was 469.1 billion won, the Ministry of Health and Welfare has decided to provide 771.8 billion won this year, up by almost 64 percent. This clearly demonstrates the government's strong dedication to nurturing the biopharma industry as one of the three key industries for the future innovation alongside the system semiconductor and future car industries. According to this year's action plan to develop and support the biopharma industry, as much as 645.1 billion won will be provided for the research and development of COVID-19 vaccines and treatments, anti-cancer drugs and cell and gene therapies. The Committee for COVID-19 Treatment and Vaccination briefed the support strategy for the development of COVID-19 treatments, which was announced this February. Also announced was the vision of strategy of the National New Drug Development Program, which is set to be initiated this July. According to the briefing, the government will continue to support the development of domestic treatments and vaccines till the end, as was originally planned. It will also focus on overcoming the global pandemic as early as possible by taking a two-track strategy, where the development of domestic vaccines and purchases from foreign countries are implemented simultaneously. The National New Drug Development Program is a government-initiated R&D support project. Under this program, the Ministry of Health and Welfare, the Ministry of Science and ICT, as well as the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy will support the entire life cycle of new drug development. This includes starting from hit and leading discovery to candidate development through to non-clinical and two-phase clinical trials and to the commercialization of new drugs. To support the development of blockbuster new drugs that have an annual sales of more than 1 trillion won, the three ministries will provide 2.2 trillion won by 2030. Minister Kwon Dok Chai said that the biopharma industry has great potential to become one of the big three industries of Korea together with the future car and system semiconductor industries. The minister further added that it will gain momentum to grow further despite technological gaps with the advanced countries if the relevant ministries combine their power and the private and public sectors make joint efforts. Celtrion announced that it has received emergency use authorization from the U.S. FDA for its COVID-19 rapid test kit named Diatrust. 
which was jointly developed with the Humusus, a medical device manufacturing company. Diatrust is known to detect the infection in less than 15 minutes. Unlike other products that detect either N or S antigens, Diatrust takes a dual antigen approach to detect both of the antigens. According to a clinical trial on study participants with early COVID-19 symptoms, Diatrust showed 93.3% and 99.1% in its sensitivity and specificity. In December last year, Celtrion signed a contract to supply its products exclusively to the U.S. with a local distributor through Celtrion USA, its U.S. subsidiary. The deal is worth 240 billion won. The company is planning to supply its latest diatrust to the U.S. market upon receiving the emergency use approval from the U.S. FDA. An insider of the company said that Celtrion's diatrust rapidly and effectively detects infection with variants that are spreading from the United Kingdom and the Republic of South Africa. The company will also expand its exports amid the global spread of those variants. A new technology that enables live B cells to be distinguished by creating antibodies in blood has been developed. This opens up a new possibility of application for, for instance, the production of antibodies necessary to treat a variety of diseases. The Institute for Basic Science, IBS, announced on the 19th that a research team of Center for Self-Assembly and Complexity, led by Associate Director Tang Yong Te, had succeeded in developing CDGB, a new fluorescent probe that distinguishes live B cells using the characteristics of the membrane structures. B cells can be found in lymphocytes, which account for 25% of the white blood cells Together with T and NK cells, B cells also play an important role in our immune system. However, unlike the two killing viruses or cancer cells that break into our body, B cells mainly produce antibodies. Up until now, there has been no way to solely distinguish live B cells. This is because B cells were only distinguishable by combining cell-specific biomarkers with antibodies. But in this process, B cells are found to be dead. The research team thus came up with a new idea to use differences in cells instead of mostly used biomarkers, such as protein and carbohydrates. They spread a B and T cells in the spleen of a rat injected 10,000 fluorescent molecules, found the right probe that stains only B cells, and named it CDGB. Kuo Nayong, a senior researcher of the team, explained that the hydrophobic CDGB forms aggregates that are sized less than 100 nanometers in solution. It was also explained that it does not show fluorescence in nano-sized aggregates, but when combined with the B cells by attaching it to the cell membranes, the fluorescent is activated. The research team has confirmed that CDGB is the right tool to distinguish cells based on the fluorescent intensity and track changes in the cell membranes. The team has also improved CDGB to more clearly distinguished B cells using higher fluorescence. CDGB contains a hydrocarbon tail, a chain of carbon molecules, and depending on the length of this tail, the fluorescence intensity differs. It was found that the CDGB derivatives with 16 to 18 carbons show the highest selectivity toward the B cells. Associate Director Tang yang -te said that the team has developed the technology to distinguish live B cells, which can replace the traditional antibody-based distinction method. The Association Director further explained that the CDGB has the potential to be further developed into a tool to detect abnormal cells based on fluorescence intensity and thus predict diseases early on. The result of this study has been published in the online edition of the prominent Journal of American Chemical Society on the 9th. Well, that's it for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe to, 
like and set your alarm for Bio News, and make sure to have Korea Bio as a friend on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. I'll come back to you in just a week with more interesting issues related to the Korean bio industry. Bye.